two weeks in about, what, four hours? Lions will be on the clock. So the question is, really, none of us know who they're going to take. You can formulate ideas, and the idea that you have today could change. The information could change. The betting odds will change. But as we sit here now, the only thing we think we know is that they're not going to take Aiden Hutchins. Because it seems more and more likely Aiden Hutchinson's going number one to the Jakes. Right. So here's my question. Don't think about what they will do. I want to know what you'll do. You're two weeks out. You have an opinion of who they should take. I want to know who it is. I want to know right now you draw your line in the sand and you tell me who you think the Lions should take because later in the hour, I'll give you Mel Kuyper's latest mock, which is very close and personal and emotional for Rico because the player they select, he has a very <laughs> deep relationship with the family. And that's that's got to be special for you. Uh, but we'll we'll get to that. But I, I've said since the beginning I would go Thibodeau. It's just how I feel. I brought this up the other day. The Trayvon Walker thing is puzzling to me. Not that he's not an elite athlete. He is. But if you question Thibodeau's production or his want to, then how do you explain Trayvon Walker being essentially a ghost for the best defense in the nation? A guy who has a pathetic, I mean an invisible pass rush win rate of 10%. A guy who's of the three between Walker, Thibodeau, and Hutchinson, the worst of the three by far against the run. How do you do that at two? I don't know. I've said Thibodeau since the beginning. I'd probably stay there. Now, I would assume and sure as hell hope the Lions know more about Thibodeau than I do. I don't get to sit down with Gabe on Thibodeau. And I don't want to hear about an interview. You're never going to get to find anything out. These teams bring these guys in, and they get interrogated. Then the teams go into, as the movie Draft Day attempted to show you but did a terrible job, oh, they dig into these players. They dig into the crazy uncle. But they dig into the players before the final hour of the draft. Oh, right. You waited. Yeah. Yeah. An hour before the draft, you realize you need a quarterback. Let me go down to the security guy's office in the basement with the concrete walls. Did you notice the game against Wisconsin? (laughs) Don't tell anybody I showed you this tape, but take a look at this. My question to you is They didn't high five him. Who do they take? I am Team Thibodeau. That's what I've been since the beginning. I'm not staying with it because I'm stubborn. I'm staying with it because nobody else has shown themselves to have risen above him. Kyle Hamilton didn't run a good 40, and I'm not taking a safety. With all due respects to the Sauce family, I'm not taking a corner at two. I'm not taking a wide receiver. The team can't take a tackle. As fun as the Jordan Davis idea is, I know that it's not realistic. So I would probably take I would take Thibodeau. I want to know where you guys are at with it. But is that who you want? There is a because, part of because me. Because when I ask you this, I'm like, you, are we thinking like the Lions? Yeah. Or is this who you want? I think where I fall on Davis, Rico, is if the sizzle had gotten to a point where he was a surefire top 10 pick, I would be more inclined to say yes. But that hasn't happened. It's leveled off to where he's somewhere between, you know, 12 and 17. I can't do that. So I'll stick with some level of in my world realism, and I'll say Thibodeau. 248 539 9797. He was here this week. Uh, Again, if if you like Trayvon Walker, here's what I'll offer you Aiden Hutchinson's pass rush win rate 33%. Thibodeau, 31%. Trayvon Walker, 10%. Keep that in mind. Who would you take right here, two weeks from tonight? Who are you taking? Right here, right now, I'm still taking Jordan Davis because it's what you just said. When you're sitting there splitting hairs between, okay, do you want Thibodeau? Do you want Walker? And you're trying to think of, okay, well, what about this guy? What about that guy? What about Jermaine Johnson? I'm saying I'm taking Jordan Davis because, A, he was the best player, defensive player in college football last year. Not Aiton, not Thibodeau, not any of these guys. 
Davis got the award. He was the straw that stirred that Georgia defense. He was the best player on the best defense. Because of him, every other Georgia player looked outstanding because he's eating up double and triple teams. He, in my opinion, is a guy that won't come around for maybe another 10 years or so. So you take him. Now, I understand, yeah, he's not high up on drafts, but I think by this time next season, we're going to be talking about him the way you talked about Micah Parsons. And Micah Parsons was a guy that, now nah, you can't take him that high. Dallas ended up getting a steal at 10, the defensive rookie of the year, and they look like they have something because, well, I don't know if you could take him. Davis is the guy. If See, it that's, was up a to great, me, that's a great job by you. And people, it's important you listen to what Rico just said because it, that, that alters my perspective from what I just said. Last year, the thought process was you couldn't take Micah Parsons in the top five. You don't take a linebacker there. Couple question marks as to how he will be deployed. And yes, a red flag about the hazing thing. The point is, when it was all said and done, a month into the season, Micah Parsons should have been a top three pick. What Rico is selling you is don't make the same mistake that many teams made just last year. Maybe that, because I want people to really listen and, oh, it's a hot t-. No, yeah. Rico's giving you kind of a really good comp for it. Positionally, you don't take linebackers or D tackles that high. Guy who some people believe can be limited by role. Maybe Jordan, you know, look. But here's see, here's the thing. What really sold me was the combine, looking at the speed and the quickness. So even if he doesn't get the sacks, because Cookies was all like, well, he doesn't sack the QB. Neither does Trayvon Walker. But you know what he does? He makes the QB move out of the pocket, and now he's throwing balls on the run. So now you may get a pick or an incomplete pass. He may not get credit for that. You know what's but funny? he caused it. Here's the other thing for Rico's argument. You could take Jordan Davis there. All of a sudden, what you 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 can't take a pass rusher at thirty two? Karloftis could be sitting there, or or better yet, what if it's Nick Benito? Yeah. Like, why couldn't they take a pass rusher at thirty two or thirty four? Maybe a David Ajabo. I know a lot of people are floating that around lately. The idea is, if you take Jordan Davis from Rico's standpoint, nobody's running the ball on you, ever. Between McNeil, Onzerike, and Jordan Davis, uh. You're not running the ball. Right. I get where Rico's coming from with this. That's why I'm not going to knock it. I can't I mean, do it. And, 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 you know, people always say, well, you can't compare him to Aaron Donald, but I remember the same thing when Aaron Donald came out. Well, he doesn't really have a position. Look at him. I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe coming from Pitt. Pitt doesn't really play anybody. It was all of these reasons why you can't take Aaron Donald. But back then, I'm – I remember saying for the Lions at a different station, you need to take this guy. He's going to solidify the defensive line. Nope. You already had Sue at the time. Nah, you're going to want to go that route, and you live to regret it. Don't make the same mistake twice. They will. But I'm telling you, Davis to me, because there's no separating guy at defensive end. But I look at him, and I don't see anybody who can do what that man does. And that's why I would take him.